Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So in today's video, we're going to be covering statics and we're going to be looking at components and resultants and this will be our 17th part in this particular series. So we have this picture on the left in the description states that a collar can slide on the vertical rod that is subjected to three forces as shown. The direction of the force F may be varied. If possible, determine the direction of force F so that the resultant of the three forces is horizontal. Knowing that the magnitude of F is for part A 2.4 kilonewtons and then for part B 1.4 kilonewtons. So what we have going on here is that it is stating that we must have a horizontal resultant. So if we were to draw on an X and Y coordinate system here with our origin point being the center right there where all the forces combined, we would have our resultant force along the x-axis here. Now, we don't know what that resultant force is. It is just saying that it is along the horizontal axis, which is our x-axis. So, in order to determine what F is, we have to fully understand that when we sum forces in the x-direction, that would be equal to our resultant force. Well, what about summing forces in the vertical direction, which is the y? Well, since the resultant force is 100% in the x direction, that means if we were to sum the components of all of my y forces, they would have to be equal to zero. Because if you remember, our resultant is equal to the square root of the summation of our x components squared plus the summation of our y components squared. So if it is fully just the x, that means that this has to be equal to zero. So we can utilize this information right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to be summing all our components in the vertical direction. So all my forces in the y direction have to be equal to zero. And we're going to take up as positive. So remember, these are going to be the components of each of these forces. So starting with the 1200 here, well, it's 100% in the y direction. So it is 100% of that 1200 newtons. And then looking at the 800 newtons here, well, it is going up into the right. So that means my component will be going upward in the y direction. So this will be plus my 800. And this time it will be cosine of 60 degrees to get it into the y direction because we're going to utilize this angle off of the y. And it will be cosine because the 60 degrees here is adjacent to the y. It is off the y. So that will be my cosine. And then lastly, down here, we are told that F is 2400 newtons here for part A. And we don't know what this angle is. That's what we're looking for overall. So since F is going down and to the right, its components in the Y direction will be going downward. So that is minus, so minus 2400 newtons. And once again, the angle of alpha is off of my vertical. So it will be cosine because that angle is adjacent to my vertical. And it'll be cosine of alpha equal to zero. Alrighty, so alpha is my only unknown, and that's what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for what alpha will cause this resultant to be 100% in the x when f is 2.4 kilonewtons. So we would get 2400 cosine of alpha is equal to 1600 here after doing some math, and then rearranging and solving for alpha, we end up with cosine inverse of 1600 over 2400 here. And that gives me a total angle of 48.19 degrees. And that would be my answer for part A. All righty. So we're just going to repeat this process for part B. Same understanding once again that the resultant is once, a, once again in the horizontal direction. And that we're going to have to sum forces in the y direction once again to be equal to zero. But instead of it being 2400 this time, I'm going to do it in blue. It will be 1400 newtons this time. So basically, we just rewrite this equation for our Fy, just substitute in 1400 for the 2400, and we will find our angle once again. But keep in mind, what does the problem say? The problem says, if possible. So sometimes it may not be possible. So as I said, the only difference will be that we are substituting out the 2400 newtons for 1400 newtons here. Everything else remains exactly the same. So that's my new equation. So once again, if I rearrange and I solve for my 
alpha here, utilizing the same steps here, I would end up with my alpha is equal to the cosine inverse of 1600 once again, but instead of it being over 2400, now it's over 1400. Well, if you try to plug this into your calculator, you're going to get an invalid answer. You're going to get an error for your answer because you cannot take the cosine inverse of a number that is larger than 1. 1600 divided by 1400 gives you something larger than 1, and that cannot happen. So what happens here is that it's just not possible. There is no angle that can happen when F is 1400 newtons that would create a result in Foley in the x direction. So there is nothing that is possible for an angle given this current set or this current setup with these values here that utilizing f of 1400 newtons would create a result in the x direction, which sometimes answers like this can happen. That's why you have to watch out when the statement says if possible. That should be a clue telling you that, well, one of these answers may not actually have a true answer to it. And the second part, part B, does not. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more Problem Solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.